family good morning it's tasha my bread prepping welcome to the channel welcome back to the channel you already know what time it is baby get your drink pull up let's talk about it today i want to talk about um spouses uh you know this is kind of generating from um i often get this question about you know hey what do you do when a significant other or spouse doesn't agree with you doesn't think that you guys need to stockpile doesn't take things um as being as dire as you maybe and then I had a subscriber that actually mentioned this in yesterday's video and, and inquired again about, you know, well, what do you do if your spouse just isn't on the same page as you and um, all of that stuff. And so this is going to just be kind of an open discussion because this is hard to just say, hey, do this, 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 very black and white. Um, but hopefully it will help you just um, relax, breathe, and figure out how you're going to move forward for you and your family. <clears throat> now, a lot of times... Um, folks overthink this and they freak out you know hey i have a partner you know i um you know i talk about preparedness or i want to do preparedness items and they just shut me down they're not they're not interested they're not into it and a lot of times that doesn't mean that you can't do it it just means that they're not willing to discuss it they're not willing to agree and have a dialogue and wrap their brains around different stuff and um and, and therefore doing the things, doing projects, going out and getting stuff. And, um, but w most of the time, or a lot of the time, <clears throat> you still have the ability to prepare. You still have the ability to get things. You're just not maybe going to have that, that enthusiasm that you would want <coughs> possibly, or that you're looking for from your spouse. Now, everybody's situation is different. So, uh, you know, everybody's, even mine, you know, I have a supportive spouse. I have a husband who loves me, who supports me, who, um, you know, nine out of 10, I ask for something, I get it. Um, whether that's a project, can you build me this? I was thinking we could do this, um, bigger, uh, purchase items. Hey, I was thinking we need to get this. Can I put this into the budget or, Hey, I put this into the budget. What are your thoughts? Um, that whole nine now for women, and I'm going to try to not make this gender, you know, one way or the other, but for a lot of us, you know, the woman runs the household, right? And don't take that literal like women run the world, we're in charge, all this stuff. No, listen, it's a partnership, all of that good stuff. But what I'm saying is, um, a lot of my job is the is I'm the glue of this family. I'm the glue of this home. I'm the one that keeps the home kind of flowing and I kind of set the tone. I have a big part of setting the tone and the dynamic of my own family. Now, does my husband just sitting on the sideline doing whatever I say? Absolutely not, okay? What I'm saying is, you know, I'm the one doing, let's say the budget and the grocery shopping and the purchases and I'm, you know, right? And so by doing that, it allows me to have a bigger picture of exactly what we're able to do, what we're not able to do. Um, and of course, we're having conversations. I don't just do the budget blindly and then that's it. And he just follows along. No, he's involved in the budget. We make decisions on the budget together. We take things off the budget. We put things on the budget. All of that stuff is together. Um, but but there are times where we um, don't see eye to eye exactly. My husband is supportive in the sense that we believe in the same things. We have the same beliefs. We have the same beliefs of what will happen one day. We have the same beliefs for most events that will happen. But there's certain events, there's certain things that he's just like, look, it's just too much. I don't want, you know, and he sometimes shuts down and he doesn't want to talk about it, right? And I joke about him like, oh, you going into sheet mode on me, right? And I joke because there's a lot of times he's like, la, 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 this is just too much, right? And so, but as a wife, as a spouse, I've learned when he does that, I've learned um, how I can bring him out of and talk about certain things. And I've, I've developed, you know, my game plan of how to go at him when I want things or when I want to discuss things. And sometimes some of these heavier topics, when we talk about, let's say, nuclear war and fallout and trying to survive through that, and for us, a tsunami here and different things, those are touchy subjects. They're hard subjects. And sometimes, and it, you know, when I'm talking about collapse and, and let's get our money out, and stuff, it's not that he doesn't agree with that stuff, but he's like, yeah, let's get our money out. Let's do this. Let's do that. Right. And we're on the same page 100%. But 
then he'll come and be like, he, but he doesn't maybe believe that that's going to happen anytime soon. And so he is not super concerned about it at all. And he's not concerned about what else can we do to prepare for that said thing, right? And so there's oftentimes I'll bring up stuff and he's just like, you know, he doesn't tell me to shut up, but he's just like, oh, I'm just sick to death of talking about this, right? Because I talk about it. So I've learned though over the years, um, how to engage with him in conversation. And basically it's, I wait until he hears stuff on his own. He'll hear stuff from a friend. He'll see a YouTuber talking about something. He'll see somebody talking about something and then he'll bring it to me. Did you, did you see this? Did you hear about this? All hyped, all excited or, or scared or whatever it is. Right. And he'll bring it to my attention. And it's funny because every time I'll laugh and I'll be like, yes, yes. You know, I've been talking about this on my channel. And then we'll discuss it because he's more open because somebody else has brought it to his attention, not just his wife. And it's not that I'm not important. It's not that I, you know, whatever. But when I'm the only one just beating that drum to him, to him, to him, and then he's getting tired, right, of like, okay, maybe you are crazy. I'm not saying that. But you know what I'm saying? Like, it little, it, it is too much. And it takes literally somebody else to say something, to bring it up, to discuss it or him to see it physically himself in an article or read about it or see it on a whatever for him to be like, whoa, this is going on. And it's not that he didn't believe that when I said it, that it was going on. He just, his level of give, you know, just wasn't there. Right. Um, and he needed to hear it. It's just like spouses who maybe aren't a hundred percent on preparedness. Like, do we have too much of that? Um, they're cool with you prepping, they're cool with you stockpiling, but they're like, man, don't you think we have enough toilet paper now, right? And they start questioning you like, okay, can you, it, it seems like you got too much now or you're taking this a little too far, but then they go through an event. Anybody who has gone through an event, a family who's gone through an event and actually physically had to use things um, and realize the value in preparedness items, the value in stockpiling, the value in self-sufficiency, that stuff matters and again, it's this action now. They saw it. They physically had to go through a hardship to physically see how important things were. And sometimes that is what it's going to take. People are not going to really be on board until they go through something and they're like, oh, thank God we had that, right? Thank God you had that little generator that could, you know, um, you know, run my CPAP or right run the refrigerator or whatever right thank god we had different ways to cook food with this you know and you had all the things ready to go for grid down right thank god the toilet system went out a pipe burst whatever and you have this little toilet emergency toilet system together yeah is it you know this little ghetto thrown together toilet system sure but when you got to go, you got to go. And if it's already been thought out, it's ready to go. That is a blessing when you are going through an event and you are stressed out. And sometimes it, it is going to take your spouse to go through something to, to, to feel and understand the importance of it. Again, too, with running the home, there's a lot of stuff, especially cheaper stuff, everyday stuff, uh, you know, especially if you're doing the shopping, super easy to stockpile, right? Because I'm not saying, hey, go to Costco, get three cases of chili and nobody's going to notice. No, but you can buy an extra can here, an extra can here, an extra thing of toothpaste here, an extra thing of body wash here. And your family's never the wiser. You're just stockpiling, you know, your little pantry, your little hygiene pantry, you know, your little um, kitchen pantry. Um, maybe you have another room that you've turned into another pantry. Maybe you have a nice dresser and a closet somewhere for the medical stuff and you just get onesie twosies here and it's regular groceries. You bring this stuff home, you put it away. Nobody's the wiser. Nobody cares. You're just doing your regular shopping because that is what you're doing. You're just doing your regular shopping, right? Um, and, and this is not to you know, tell you, hey, just do it and just keep secrets and not say anything. No, but what I'm saying is sometimes spouses are not in tune and, and really don't care, right? Um, you know, my husband cares about the groceries when he's maybe looking for a snack or, hey, what did you get or whatever. He is definitely not paying attention to like, oh, well, why'd you buy three cans of chili this time, right? Absolutely not, right? So what I'm saying is there's a lot of stuff that you can do behind the scenes just as a normal everyday thing that you're doing for your family um, in, the, in the way of doing the budget and buying groceries and doing this. Now, some of you, let's say, let's reverse this, or let's say it's a different dynamic. It's not so much the prepping. It's not so much the getting the extra food and stuff like that, but you want to do the projects and they just sound a little squirrely, right? You want to go get a generator. You want to get some backup solar. You know, you want to um, get some bigger projects. You want to get a freeze dry, different things. And your spouse is just like, I'm not, I'm not about it. Right. I don't want to spend the money on that. That's going to cost money for the, for the, for the, 
you know, the project stuff, whatever, whatever it's going to cost to, to, um, build it. You know, maybe it's fortification. You're like, let's get more cameras or let's get some lights or let's get, you know, some whatever. Right. And, and your spouse is just not on board. They're like, look, we've got a couple cameras. I don't understand the importance of having more. I don't understand maybe of having a whole setup for grid down and having CCTVs I, that just doesn't seem that important to me. But of course, if things go left and there's chaos and there's people trying to break in your home and this and that, and there's no power, obviously they're going to see the value in that later. But before that, they might not see the value, you know, um, a Berkey, a large water filter. Well, why do we need that? It's two, $300. It's so large. Why do we need that? You know, and it's a lot of things is how you spin it. Well, I like filtered water and I'm the cook and I want to be able to have a lot of water at my disposal to be able to cook and it's filtered and it's clean and, and I don't have to worry about it. And it's, you know, and you spin stuff as a health thing. A lot of stuff can be spent in a different way don't spin it as prepping don't spin it as preparedness don't spin it as the end of the world and the sky is falling you spin stuff for what it is a water filter is a water filter how is that not important to have your water filtered in your home right and and in a Berkey or it's just a different way of um, a, a bigger bulk of water being able to be filtered right it's just a little bit bigger and then you just say oh, I think it's pretty and I just like you know having large amount of water you know filtered right you know you know I do a lot of cooking or I do a lot of drinking water or whatever I'm trying to save money all these bottled water I'm trying to save money I saw an article you know the plastic's not good anymore and it's getting expensive and I want to just filter the tap water and whatever the case may be spin stuff a different way um there's different things you can do in your house, you know, staging, I mean, make it a decor thing. You know, you're just, maybe they're cool with you spending money and doing decor and stuff like that. Do that. Get your dressers, get some bougie dressers, um, put them somewhere, put them nice, start filling them up with medicine, you know, stage. We have, um, lamps all over the house they're staged as decor they're just there you know you can stage you know nobody is going to be upset about stage flashlights stage batteries having extra lighters and stuff like that nobody's going to be mad about that right um you know stage that stuff have a little extra lights out box you're not extreme you're like no this is just this is just a few preps don't even say preps it's just a few things you know we lose power um you know we lost power the other day and i wanted to get a couple lanterns and you just get them and that's it um but there's a lot of stuff that you know you can it can be part of decor it can be part of the home it's not you know you don't spin it as you know a prepping item right you spin it for what the item is and what it, why it's needed right um, you know, I know that this might not be helpful at all, right? You're like, okay, this is not helping me at all. Um, and it's a hard, it's a hard thing, right? And I might be using an example that doesn't even apply to you. You're like, well, I'm the man. I don't have anything to do with the budget. I don't have anything to do with the food and the, and the buying stuff. And, um, you know, I'm trying to tell her, let's get in the budget some prepping items and she's not about it, you know, or I want some more ammo or I want some more guns or I want some more whatever, right? And she's not about it, right? I can't get her to agree. You know, at some point, <clears throat> the hard conversations have to be had. Like, you know, obviously you're with this person and, you know, you clearly feel like you should be preparing for something and it's, it's hard, you know, break things down. You're not gardening because the, you believe the sky is falling. You're gardening because you enjoy it. You want to grow some food. Um, think of some recipes that your spouse wants to cook and then grow those things and then bring them inside and say, look, I've got this thing we grew and we're going to make whatever, grow some peppers and tomatoes and make salsa. Come in with the blender, get the other things you want or need or grow them in your garden and make you a salsa every year. Maybe your spouse loves salsa. You guys do that as a family. That has nothing to do. Does that sound like crazy tin hat foil wearing, gas mask wearing, running through the jungle with all your, your weapons, fighting the government? Like, does that sound like that? No, that sounds like you grew some food and you made some salsa and you guys are going to get some chips and you're going to eat it, right? Like it's, it's not even that serious. And that's what I mean. But yet that's a huge skill for survival, right? It's learning to grow food, learning to grow things with your own hands, learning that learning curve, right? you know, raised beds or animals or whatever. That stuff can be spent for what it is, right? Um, you know, yeah. Is it hard maybe to buy large bags of rice, 50 pound bags of rice, and you're trying to put it in totes and keep it in the garage? And he's like, what is this? And you're like, 
it's rice. And he's like, what, it, why do we need that much rice, right? Um, you know, and maybe you can give him some examples. You bring up Venezuela, you bring up different things that happened in the world. Um, and, and yeah, maybe he looks at you crazy and, and you, at some point you are a spouse and you have a relationship and you need to explain how important it is that you're able to do this, right? Um, listen, you know, I, I don't want to argue about this. I think this is something that, you know, we eat a lot of rice in this family. And I don't think that you realize how much rice we eat. We are going to eat this rice and spin it like that. Maybe I, you know, I don't know. It's, it's going to be difficult. Maybe you're the spouse that's hiding it. You know, maybe you're buying those 50 pound bags. You're putting them in totes. You're putting them in a, in a closet and he's none the wiser. He's it's clothes. It's Christmas stuff. It's whatever, right? Maybe you're doing that. Maybe you're doing that in the garage, putting a tag on it, Christmas stuff, right? I don't, I don't know. I'm not telling you to lie to your spouse, but I'm telling you that this stuff will be needed. It will be used. It will be important. And your spouse will be thankful when they go through something with you and you have prepared a little bit, right? It will all come back full circle. It's just a level of insurance is really what it is. Maybe, you, excuse me, maybe you spin it like that. You know, this is insurance, right? Um, this is to ensure that, you know, uh, and use whatever examples you have in your, in your, you know, maybe, maybe your spouse saw that there was um, not that much food when the pandemic first happened, right? When people were freaking out about toilet paper, there were stores all over the country that actually got bought out, right? That um, had a run on them and there was no food. Maybe your spouse saw that and you use that. Hey, you remember when you saw that? This, babe, this is just to get ready for that. That's just, This is just to have a, a little bit of extra of everything so that we're ready to go and we're not, you know, panicked at the store trying to get some stuff. Or you sell it like, hey, I'm just trying to get some extra medicine because, you know, if there's no, if there's no hospitals, there's no pharmacies open, um, you know, what's your plan? If you run out of medicine in 30 days, what's your plan and what are you going to do? And just ask him to tell you what the plan is, right? And maybe that just that little bit gets his mind thinking about, okay, yeah, maybe we do need to figure out how to get another bottle of my medicine because I want to make sure I have it, right? Um, if you bring a little bit more, I'm not going to say fear, but just a little bit more, it's personal now because it's something that they're doing or taking, um, and you can do that the same with the children or whatever. And, and to get these little buy-ins, it's about those little buy-ins and then shifting it for what things are and not necessarily the sky is falling. Um, we have to prepare, we have to stockpile the rafters, you know, because maybe mentally they, it's just too much for them, right? They'd rather be on Instagram watching videos and chilling and relaxing life and work and, and it's already hard doing that stuff. And then they come home and they're dealing with you saying the sky is falling and it's just a little too much. Um, and it's too much sometimes for my husband as well. Look what I do. Um, and sometimes, you know, I want to talk about stuff and he's just like, I've had it. I don't, I don't want to discuss this I, or I don't believe that it's going to get that bad or I don't believe it's going to happen anytime soon. It's not that he doesn't believe we should prepare. He's just like, why are we talking about it so much? Why are we like just so heavily preparing for it when he doesn't believe, you know, he believes maybe possibly we have more time than, than I think we do. Right. So anyway. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope the person that left the comment yesterday uh, is satisfied that you got the answers that you wanted. Hopefully this helps you guys just think through maybe some different dynamics. Obviously every family is different. You know, every conversation is different. Spouses are different. Dynamics are different. Variables are different. And so you just have to work through it the best that you can um, because, you know, unless you're going to walk away from the person, you got to figure it out. Okay. So anyway, be well, be kind, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Take care. Bye.